this is the uh, text question practice for part two. We're going to be focusing on implicit differentiation and logarithmic and also exponential. All right, so let us get started. Uh, for the first question uh, here, 3x squared and plus 2xy plus y squared equals 2. Now we want to find that dy over dx at x equals 1. And all we have to do is find the uh, derivative of this one implicitly. So here we have 6x uh, plus 2 times the derivative of x times y. Uh, we realize that that's equal to xy prime plus y. x prime simply becomes 1 plus y, uh, y squared becomes 2y and also y prime is equal to 0. Now when you plug in 1 for uh, x, then we end up having this simply becomes 6 here plus 2y prime plus y uh, plus 2y y prime is equal to 0. Now, then I all right, but in order for us to finish this question, we need to, we need to know the values of a value of y. Where are we going to get it? All right, in fact, we can get them from right over here. When x equals one, how does it uh, equation look like? So we have three plus two y plus y squared is equal to two, and when you subtract two from both sides, we will end up getting one plus 2y plus y squared is equal to 0. And since this is a perfect square, we get y plus 1 squared is equal to 0, which gives us y as negative 1. That means when you plug in negative 1 here and also here, we get something like this. 6 plus 2y minus 2 minus to y prime is equal to 0. But here you will realize that y prime will cancel out. That means 4 cannot be equal to 0. Therefore, dy over dx must be not be defined. All right, next question here. Here we have uh, f of x. Uh, in fact, when you look into this one, we get to see that the f prime uh, and when x equals 3 is the question. But when x equals 3, we see that the absolute value will have the b shape. Meaning, the slopes from the left side will not be equal to slopes from the right side. And by the differentiability, we'll realize that the slope will not exist. Once again. Let us move on to number 3. Here, uh, it looks like a very complicated question. We have logarithm and also exponential function embedded in it. But in fact, if you have to simplify uh, ln of e to the 2x. We will realize that by the power of will, this will be equal to 2x ln of e. But ln of e will be equal to 1, so this will be in fact equal to 2x. In other words, this we are simply looking for derivative against x with a function of 2x. Now we know what this answer is, because the derivative of 2x against x would have been simply equal to 2. All right, the next question. Here, uh, we have, uh, we can solve this one exponentially. Then in that case, we'll have cosine of x will be equal to e to the y. By the chain rule, we're going to have y prime. Now, if you know, uh, solve the y prime by itself, then we're going to have y prime will be equal to cosine of x over e to the y power. For e to the y power, as it is given, is sine. So that must be equal to cosine of x over sine of x. Now, cosine of x over sine of x, we know that, yes, that's equal to cotangent. So therefore, cotangent becomes our answer. All right, next question here. Uh, dy over dx. Now, that means we have y over here dx would have been way over here. Now, you can you can see that these are all chain rules. So in fact, if you combine these two things together, what we end up getting is this. Uh, 
on the side you will realize a u prime or du maybe I should write down db du over db is 1 uh, plus 1 over b squared that's what we end up getting but after that we have dv in terms of x so we have dv dx is simply 1 over x now how does that all relate because once once again when x is equal to e v is equal to 1 all you have to do is plug in e in place of x now when v is equal to 1 you get to realize that u simply is equal to 0 now you ready let's try to put all of them together so dy over d uh, u is equal to secant square u but how are we going to have dy over du du over db and db over dx to become dy over dx all we have to do is simply multiply that we have dy over du times du times db times db times dx must be equal to dy over dx now what is dy over du that becomes secant squared u where u is equal to zero now secant squared of zero is equal to one du uh, du db then in that after that since v is equal to one then that this portion becomes simply two and dv dx where x is equal to e then we end up getting one over e. so our final answer becomes two over there it goes therefore choice d becomes our answer all right the next question i believe this is number six here we have when you take the derivative of f f of x we get g of x but when you take the derivative of g of x then we get f of x squared. Now this simply means we have to take the derivative of f two times. So let's try to take the uh, first derivative. Then when you take the derivative of this one one time, by the chain rule, well, but by the first definition of f, we get g of inside value x cubed times 3x squared by the chain rule. Now, then what are, what are we going to get for the double derivative or second derivative? Then we end up getting uh, derivative of g, which we know that to be equal to f, so f of, but we have to square the whatever is inside, therefore we end up getting x to the sixth power times 3x squared plus as it is g, uh, gx cubed and then times derivative of this one which is 6 so we're looking for anything that is equivalent to this one that only only uh, thing that seems to be uh, somehow close to that uh, yes but as we uh, I forgot to mention one thing here when we are doing this portion we have to take the derivative of inside, which was 3x squared. We have to multiply by 3x squared, which ends up being 9x to the fourth and f of x to the sixth power plus 6x g, to, uh, g of x to the third power. That will be our final answer, which is choice D. All right, uh, let us look at the next question. Since we are a derivative of arc sine of 2x. Now, uh, we can derive this one uh, later in the video of inverse trig. But for now, if you have arc sine of x, and if you take the derivative of that, we get 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, but instead of x, we have 2x. So what we end up getting is... 1 over square root of 1 minus 2x entire thing squared. But by the uh, derivative of inside, the chain rule, you have to multiply that by 2. 
the only uh, answer that is equivalent to that would have been uh, choice D. That would be our answer. All right, how about this one? Mm -hmm. H approaches zero. That is, that is very intriguing. And one over H here. In fact, I want you to compare this expression to this one. Limit as H approaches zero for function f of x plus h minus function f of x divide the entire thing by h. What is this? Yes, that's right. This is f prime of x, meaning the derivative of f of x. But in fact, if you have to re uh, look at this one, one more time, because division in the logarithm is equivalent to ln of 2 plus h minus ln of 2. You see, division in the logarithm is subtraction in, uh, between the logarithms here, and divide by h as h approaches 0. Now, you will realize that this looks very similar to this one. In other words, this is the uh, definition of the derivative of what function, you might ask. Uh, as you can see, f of x, the second one that comes comes uh, in the difference portion, will give you a lot of hint. Since we have ln of 2, then we can safely assume that the function must be uh, ln of x. Now, when you take the derivative, then you will get 1 over x. But here, you can see that the value of x must be equal to 2. Therefore, this will end up in 1 over 2 as our answer. Choice C. All right, so we have uh, f is an odd function. What happened to f prime? Now, but in fact, if I were to uh, well, rewrite this one out, then what's going to be happening is this. Just given that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. When you take the derivative here on both sides, then this portion will simply become f of negative x, f prime of negative x times the derivative of the inside, which means negative 1, which here is equal to negative f prime of x. But when you multiply by negative 1, then you will realize that f prime of negative x by two negatives, we end up getting f prime of x. Now, interestingly enough, we start with an odd function. Our answer ends up being an even function. So therefore, what is this equal to? By the definition of even function, we will realize that a will be our correct answer. All right, let's move on. This is number 10. Here we have uh, y equals e to the n times x. This basically means uh, we have we will be taking the derivative n number of times. And how can we do this one? In fact, if you take the derivative first time, you will have e to the nx as it is. But derivative of uh, nx will be multiplied together, which will be simply equal to n. How about n double derivative? Then n was already there from the beginning. We just need to, we just need, need to take the derivative of e to the x. Our derivative of e to the x, uh, e to the nx will be simply n times e to the nx, same as before. But you will notice that we have two n's multiplying together, hence becoming n squared. For the third one, third derivative, we're going to have another n multiplying, and you can easily see that this will be the pattern. Then we have nth number of times, n will be multiplying at each and every single time. So therefore, our answer will be n to the nth power, because the n is being kept multiplied. That's, that's basically what we end up getting. All right, number, uh, I believe this is 11. So here we have, uh, we have to use the uh, product rule along with implicit differentiation. So here we have the derivative of tangent becomes secant squared of x times y. But what is the derivative of x times y? You might wonder. That's x times y prime minus x itself. That's equal to 1. 
uh, in fact, this must be plus equal to one. Then what happened to uh, y prime by itself? So first we have to do uh, divide by secant square. Uh, then we end up getting x y prime plus x must be equal to one over secant square x y. But you will realize that secant square is simply cosine square x y. Now. Then, uh, and then we have to subtract x, so x times y prime is equal to cosine of xy with square on top minus x. And when you divide each, each side each side by x, then we end up getting y prime is equal to cos uh, cosine square xy minus one in uh but here portion we end up getting divided by x so anything equivalent to that would have been our answer uh, which makes our answers to be uh, sorry about that i made a silly mistake here this one must be y y which makes this one as y and this one also makes it as y. So therefore, our final answer becomes choice E. All right, let's go for the next question here. We have slope of the tangent line. Now, slope basically, we are looking at y prime. y prime here is equal to 1 over x over 2. We're going to multiply by 1 over 2 by the derivative of the inside. Then this simplifies into 1 over x. But well, we are looking at x is equal to 4, which makes b as our answer. Next question here. When you take the derivative, uh, derivative of a to the x power, in fact, is equal to a to the x, same as before, but we got to multiply by ln of a. That means when we take the derivative of this one, yes, we got to have 10 to the x squared minus 1 with the derivative of the exponent, which we end up getting 2x, but also multiply by ln of 10. That becomes our uh, final answer. So, which has all the components? I believe choice D has the all the components of the answer. All right, let us move on. Here we have how we're going to get the value of dy over dx. First, let's take the derivative of x squared, which ends up being 2x x uh, times y becomes plus xy prime plus y and the third one becomes 3x square I mean y square times y prime which is equal to 0 now we have y prime here and here so therefore the other two terms can easily move then we end, we end up getting y prime. We fit the fact that out x plus 3y squared. That's equal to negative 2x minus y. By dividing by this portion, we will end up getting negative 2x minus y all over x plus 3y squared. So that becomes our our final answer. Uh, the only thing that seems to be correct is choice A. All right, how are we going to get this one? Uh, derivative of arc tangent is 1 over, let me write that up, arc tangent. This here becomes 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now likewise here we're going to have 1 over 1 plus cosine squared x. But well, we have to take the derivative of inside which is uh, the derivative of cosine we end up getting times negative sine of x. All right then that makes choice a to be our answer. Now what is the definition of f prime of e, we're going to be looking for difference portions. <coughs> but in place of x, 
we have you know, we gotta have e embedded in it that means only thing that, that's possible is choice e here we have to use the product rule we have x squared times e to the x power plus e to the x power times the derivative of x squared which is equal to 2x now then here we have uh, x and then uh, e to the x is common so we have when we factor out x times e to the x here we have x plus 2 becomes our final answer choice c all right how about this one we'll be taking the derivative by the portion rule here so then y prime becomes first denominator square x squared and then uh, x times the derivative of the top which becomes 1 over x second portion becomes minus ln of x times the derivative of the denominator which would be equal to 1 then we here end up having 1 minus ln of x over x squared that becomes our answer choice b all right so here uh, dy over dx, uh, they actually gave us x and y value. So let us try to find out what the derivative will be. Derivative of x becomes a 1. Second, derivative of 2 times x, y simply becomes xy prime plus y minus 2y, y prime is equal to 2. So let us plug in 1, 1 for each value. So we have 1 plus 2 times y prime plus 2. Or plus one for now, later on it will become two, uh, minus two y prime, which is equal to two. So if we to bring uh, everything onto one side, I uh, will end up getting uh, this value will cancel out this value, so which makes uh, this one to be none existing all right next question how are we going to calculate this one uh you will realize that if i have to rewrite this one y is equal to x to the ln of x power but if you have to take the because we have exponent exponent where here i mean uh, we have base and exponent are variables so one one thing which we can do is taking the natural logarithm of both sides But since by the power rule, this becomes ln of x times ln of x. Then when we take the derivative of this one, we end up getting 1 over y times y prime. It becomes ln of x times 1 over x plus the same thing, ln of x times 1 over x. Here, therefore, y prime by itself becomes uh, 2 times ln of x times 1 over x multiplied by y, which is x times ln of x. All right, and what is our answer here? Uh, it seems to be yes, only answer that seems to be correct is choice C. All right, so let us move on to the next question, number 21. Now, when we take the derivative of each side, first we end up getting 3x squared plus 3 times x squared prime plus y and then plus 6y squared is equal to uh, y squared times y prime is equal to 0. Now, then we are looking for y prime in two locations, here and here. Everything else will move on to the other side. So we have 3xy prime plus 6y prime times y squared is equal to 0. I mean, is equal to. Oops that we have moved on to the other side negative 3x squared another, another thing is times 3 uh, plus 3x uh, 3y so minus 3y 
and then when you factor our y prime, we'll end up getting 3x x uh, plus 6y squared is equal to negative 3x squared plus 3y. Therefore, our final answer becomes 3x squared minus plus 3y dividing everything by 3x plus 6y squared. There it goes. But we can cancel out all the threes, and our final answer becomes y prime is equal to negative x squared plus y, and the denominator becomes x plus 2y squared. Now, only thing that seems to be the correct answer is the choice B. How about this one? Uh, uh, this is basically following the formula. All we have to do is 2dx stays as 2dx, which means choice C. And, and then uh, we have to multiply by the ln of the base, which is choice C. That's what we end up getting. All right, move on. Here, what are we going to do? Uh, e to d something will stay as e to d. Same thing. But, but uh, multiply by the derivative of inside, which will be uh, 3 times 1 over x squared times 2x. Now, when you simplify this one, it will be 3 ln of x squared. Now, plus 6 over x. I mean, times 6 over x. Which one of these would be our answer? You will realize that there is no answer that looks like that, but let us continue for a second. Here we have e to the ln of x to the sixth power by three going back to the uh, going back as an exponent uh, times six over x. But this left side portion will become x to the 6th power. Times 6 over x becomes 6 x to the 5th power. Therefore, that becomes our answer. Here we have a basically circle with the radius of 5. What is the value of the double derivative in this case? Let's talk about the first derivative. We have 2x plus 2y, y prime, uh, is equal to 0. When you divide by 2's, we have x plus y times y prime is equal to 0. When you take the double, der double derivative, then here we have x becomes 1 plus derivative of y becomes y prime uh, times y prime plus next one is y times y double prime is equal to zero. Here we have what we are looking for is this one. So we have to figure out all the other values. Uh, y value, we know that to be equal to three, but how about y prime? Y prime was uh, was able to be calculated in this way. We have four plus three y prime must be equal to zero. That means y prime must be negative four over three. When, once you plug that in, we have 1 plus negative 4 over 3 squared plus negative 4 over 3 times uh, the second derivative is equal to 0. Then what are we going to calculate here? Uh, this becomes 1 plus 16 over 9 plus negative quarter y is uh, the second plus double derivative equals to zero. Then once you calculate this one, y double prime is equal to 25 over 9 when you combine those two things together, but multiply by reciprocal negative 
to be over 4. Then we get to realize that here our answer becomes negative uh, 15. Uh, I mean negative 25 over uh, 12. So let's look if we have uh, anything like that. Oops, uh, there's another small mistake, sorry about that. We should have plugged in the value of y, but we end up plugging in y prime. So this value and this value has to be uh, erased. That means here we have uh, y value was equal to 3, I believe, and then here 3. So then here, uh, what we end up getting is v of 2 multiplied by 1 over uh, 3. Then we end up getting 25 over 27. That becomes our final answer. All right. Now, next, uh, f prime. Now, once you, in fact, when you take the derivative of this one, we'll end up getting something like this. Uh, it looks like 1 over x squared minus 1. Now, and then right after that, we have, we've got to multiply by 2x. But when you look through the rest of them, in fact, they all look like that. But what are we going to do? You will realize that this is an even function. That means when you take the derivative, this will, this will have to be the odd function. One way for us to do, uh, one way for us to make sure this one is an odd function is it cannot be this one. So as this one, it's out. So as this one, is out. We're looking at those two options. But uh, here, uh, one thing that we get to realize is that the, uh, when x is greater than uh, 2, uh, I mean greater than uh, 1, then it becomes positive. When x is less than negative 1, it has to be negative, uh, which will be the case for this one. Uh, we cannot accept this one as the answer because uh, we will realize that when we take the derivative of absolute value of x squared minus 1, the absolute value in fact carries over to become this one. So therefore our final answer will be choice B. Alright, uh, that's it for now and have a nice day and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.